a pressing one that's come from the state of Kerala. Uh, there is a fresh showdown in Kerala between the CPM-led uh, Travancore Devasam board, which controls all the temples or almost all the temples in the state. They've now issued a notice banning RSS and its affiliated organizations from doing any gatherings in Hindu temples. The notice says that the use of temple properties and assets for holding any mass drills by groups like the RSS will be banned. The state temple board has promised strict action for violating this order, the claiming that violations by uh, the Saffron groups have been increasing since 2016. The Devasam board also says that nothing other than temple rituals and festivals should be held on the premises. The Congress has welcomed the move, accusing the RSS and other Sung organization is, uh, organizations of spreading hatred. The RSS has called it undemocratic, claiming it has never given weapons training uh, in outside temples. RSS uh, is a Sangha Parivar organization. They are spreading hatred among the people. They are trying to uh, make division among the people. Uh, the, the premises of the temple cannot be used for such purposes. Shakhas and activities of RSS is going on according to the laws and the rules prevailing in these countries. Uh, if anything against that uh, thing happens here, the government uh, can uh, take an action. Kerala Devasam board is clearly manned by people who are religious so-called secular have no sense of dharma because even gods of Hindus carry weapons. But RSS does not carry weapon. That itself is a false premise. They have alleged that RSS offices are storehouse of weapons. All right, Tom Vadakan of the BJP is now joining us. Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharya of the CPIM. Vivek Narayan uh, is managing editor South. Uh, for Network 18. Uh, Tom Vadakan, you heard from what uh, the opposition leader there said, and he's not a, a left man. You heard from what the Devasam minister said, that they believe that uh, temple premises are being used for weapons training, temple premises are being used for spreading the philosophy of hatred, and that's why they are banning uh, organizations of RSS or any other organization uh, which uh, uh, the CPM believes is spreading hatred from practicing mass drills outside temples that are controlled by the Devasam board. Tom. Zakhar, the question that I would like to raise is since 1958, Nambudripat government, and since then there's been no provocation, there was no, no issue at all. Now this business of appeasement has taken charge, and uh, those that have been elected into Devasam are party uh, representatives, and they do what the party wants them to do. And this, uh, in 21 also, this, uh, this uh, notification came. And now it is a repeat of it. So this is essentially a drill uh, uh, attempt on appeasement. There's no two doubts about it. This no, but who are they appeasing? Very peaceful. Who are they appeasing very by peaceful. saying that there can't be mass drills outside temples controlled by the board? Come again? Who are they appeasing? They, they are appeasing, uh, appeasing a community which I don't want to name at this particular point. But the community also knows that this is a gimmick and that is nothing more serious than that. Okay. Because there has been no riots in Kerala and in fact they are the most peaceful, peace-loving people. It okay. is this indicators that they try to create a situation where the RSS is involved in everything. The reality is RSS is a social cultural organization. When the tsunami was on, I personally was in Kerala and I could see the kind of social service the RSS was uh, doing. N neither was the CPM there nor the Congress there at that juncture. Okay. So, Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharya, the contention being made by the BJP and the RSS is there is the law of the land and if there is anything that violates the law of the land and what they are doing, uh, please take action with using the full force of the law. And as Tom said... Kerala prides itself in being one of the most peaceful states in the country. There are hardly any riots that have happened in that state. Uh, therefore, on what basis are you saying that you will not allow RSS uh, and its affiliate organizations to carry out activities in temple premises that are controlled by the Devasam board? Let us first take it. What is the status of RSS? Is it a religious organization? Is it a political party? What is it? If it is not a religious organization, they don't have any right. 
similar like any other organizations which are <coughs> which have nothing to do with the religion or of a particular religion they profess if the temple authority decides that they will not allow anybody to carry on activities which has nothing to do with the temple activities what's the wrong in it that's the most justified thing and you see your right to profess your so, so called social cultural activities that has not been interfered with the temple authority feels that yes we will not allow our premises to be used for any purposes <laughs> Conducted by RSS or its allied forces, but but it's the temple authority is controlled by a board a, which has which is trade. essentially controlled by the government, Mr. Bhattacharya. Whether it is your government or the previous UDF government that's had its true. own political appointee. That's true. That's true. That political appointee did not take a decision which really affects anybody's right. But any organization do not have any right to carry on activities which has nothing to do with the temple activities. do some temple activities and if the authority allows you you can carry on authorities did not take away any of your fundamental right which the authorities cannot and they did not do so it appears from your own statement that the authority said no but right to any right to peaceful assembly no right to peaceful assembly is a fundamental right that's true they did not disturb your right to peaceful assembly they only said you cannot use my premises even right to peaceful assembly is not permitted if the particular owner of a particular premises okay. denies you your right to use that premises you All have right, you have I right go to, to Vivek, uh, uh, Tom respond to that you, uh, the rss can continue with its shakas in fact in kerala they have the highest number of shakas in any state in the country nobody is stopping that yes zaka the question that they uh, i uh, uh, demand that an thing. answer from the cpm is when did the government control temples and who are the elected people who are in these devasam boards who decide what the government wants the loot has been going on of hindu temples this does not happen with the uh, the church does not happen with the mosque and here is this total control and the money that is uh, captured by these people and they 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 are no no work is being done in the temple and this is basically an appeasement exercise to okay. ensure that they win the next election So And Vivek is, is this entire thing temples? the moot point of it is it the fact that uh, these temples are controlled by the board and there has been a section of the BJP and RSS that has been wanting to sort of free uh, these temples from the board and from political interference thereof No Zaka it's something much more basic it's very political in nature remember as you rightly said uh, Kerala has about 5000 working shakhas and couple of months back they come out with a statement saying that we'll have 8000 shakhas in a year's time now those statements have uh, rung a bell with the cpm remember cpm in kerala is not an atheist party it's a hindu party if you look at the ball, ball park figures if i can quote uh, uh, the total population out of the total population 55% would be hindu around 25 would be muslim and roughly 20% christian generally speaking the christian and muslim population do not consider the marxists as their natural ally iuml the party which claims to represent the muslims has almost never supported the cpm and uh, as the case the christian community as well as the influential orthodox church and even few catholic denominations are more comfortable with the congress now the cpm has realized especially post the sabrimala agitation that uh, we are a hindu party it is only only the hindu community those 55% or half of them they will be voting for us so they have to make sure, ensure that there is a consolidation now for that what they have done the last uh, uh, Krish, shri krishna jayanti which is majorly seen as a uh, bala gokulam or as an rss event you had an event in kannur where uh, shri krishna tableaus were taken by the cpm okay. so the so called atheist party so it's a matter of survival where pinrai vijayan led cpm government has found a formula or thinks they have a formula for the next elections it's a matter of survival that they need the hindu votes irrespective of uh, uh, whether they are with the temple or not and you would also see that uh, till about a decade back cpm was openly against its senior leadership going to the temples yeah. or being part of the entire temple propaganda now they are in a process of capturing temple capturing in the sense being part of the temple boards whether it be devaswam or non devaswam but rss uh, from what i gather they have said that we are not bothered by all these things uh, there may be a 1200 devaswam temples there are enough places where we can go and do our shakhas uh, there is not going to be confrontation 
But as I said, what, it is clearly seen and projected by the RSS as an anti-Hindu move. Well, one of the contentions, uh, Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharya, uh, that Tom also raised, although not, not explicitly, is would you dare uh, put out a, a, a notice like this uh, for all churches in the state or for all mosques in the state? Would you disallow church-affiliated organizations from carrying out their activity uh, outside church premises or in, in church complexes? Or would you do the same with uh, uh, Muslims uh, carrying out affiliated activity inside masjid premises and masjid, masjid complexes? You wouldn't. You wouldn't dare put out such a statement because the backlash to it you would see, be quite, the whole quite heavy. Premises, the foundation of your premises of argument is absolutely false and is complete fallacy. This is not the decision of the government. This was the decision of the particular board who runs the management of the temple. If any church authority or any mosque authorities of anybody, even the RSS, if decides that they will not allow their particular premises to be used for any purpose, who is going to prevent? No, no, but Mr. Bhattacharya, you are being disingenuous there. Everybody knows that the Devasam the board is a political board. It has political appointees. It doesn't matter. There's doesn't even a Devasom minister in matter. the cabinet. It has an independent There's nothing independent please, about please, it. It has an independent status. They have the, the Devasom trust has an independent status. This is not government. Sir, and the there is a Devasom the minister. Today, even the sir, RSS may I, decides, may I, give, give me 10 seconds. There is a Devasom minister who is a CPIM no, card-holding card member of your don't, party. Don't. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Even then, this is an independent body. If the government and the Debasam Trust are two independent bodies, the government did not decide what is to be done by the temple authorities. Okay. Government cannot decide I, what will I, be done I, by I'm the RSS not, authorities. I don't, I don't think that's, if the that's RSS today, accurate. Please, the Devasum allow me board, to complete. No, no, once again, the Devasam board on top of the board I, sits, the allow minister, me to complete. sits the minister who is, like this I said, a card-carrying member of the, of the party. And I, I'm not saying it's, it happens only when the CPM is doesn't in power. Matter. Even when the UDF was in power, Congress appointees were there in the board. Anyway... But, but Tom, one of the points see, that the board keeps making issue. from time issue to time is, is, you know, there, there probably are a handful of temples in, uh, in Kerala which get a bulk of the money, donations and charities from the devotees. There are thousands of temples under the board. You know, if you were to depend on their own individual contributions of the devotees, none of those temples would be uh, kept up. Uh, the upkeep would be very, very difficult. So you'll have four or five temples where a bulk of the faithful and the devotees strong and, and those temples control a bulk of the monies. And if you had no board, the rest of the temples would, would be in a dilapidated condition. Uh, that's not true, uh, Zaka. If they were given an independent charge, the churches are running, the mosques are running. I mean, I'm sure they, 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 they are well looked after, they are taken care of. And this whole business of looting the temples, I mean, is only attached to the Hindus. What kind of a logic is this? And this gentleman say, coming from CPM says, what does it matter? I mean, when you push all your members in there and take the diktats of your government and then say, well, what is there? Uh, we will do what we want. The point here is people of Kerala have woken up. This loot has been going on for quite some time. And now banning the answers from the premises. Who are they to decide? I mean, they have put all their members inside the Devasam board and they dictate terms. And the government of the day says, you do this and keep, uh, give us the funding. And the funding goes from where else? Not for the upkeep of the temple. If the churches can run and if the, temp and if the mosques can run without the help of the government, I'm sure the Hindu uh, temples can do the same. Okay. This I'll, give, I'll, give, uh, I'll give Vivek Narayan the final word. Uh, 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 is there merit in this argument? Will this become now the big political argument from the BJP and the RSS going into the 2026 assembly election that you know, you have one set of rules for the Muslim community and for the Christian community, but for the Hindus, the temples have to be run. And by the way, this is not just in, in, uh, in Kerala. In Tamil Nadu, you have an HRNC department. In Andhra Pradesh, you have again an endowments department which runs uh, uh, most temples in the state. So is this an argument that you're going to see increasingly in the run-up to the next uh, election in the state? Yes, Akka, it will be one of the issues which will be raised uh, very strongly by the BJP. Uh, but if you look at what, uh, just to take a leaf out of what Tom said, uh, uh, will you do that to the other two communities? Yes, they did. They did uh, last year. They did try and do some kind of an auditing of the church, uh, uh, church, church-owned properties. And uh, well, that one move 
of attempting to audit church run uh, uh, properties ran into so much of uh, resistance that they scampered. The CPM uh, led government uh, refused to go ahead with it. Now they have understood that they cannot, as I said, my only point is that 55% of the Hindus cannot be alienated is what the CPM has learned opposed Sabarimala. And they are trying desperately to capture the temples and make sure that the RSS does not come anywhere. They are the natural enemy or the so-called opponent of the CPM is the RSS. And that's exactly why they are trying to curtail. And when the RSS says, and in one year that we'll have 8,000 shakhas out of Kerala, that's something which is a matter of concern for them. All right, we'll Sakha. leave it at that. Thanks very much uh, to Vivek, Tom Varakan and Mr. Bikash and Bhattacharya for joining us. We'll see how this story plays out in the run-up to the next assembly election in Kerala. For now, uh, this circular by the Devasam Department uh, stands unless, of course, it's challenged in court. Meanwhile, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who's in Australia for the third and final leg of his three-nation tour, he received a rousing welcome at the Kudos Arena at the Sydney Olympic Park, where he arrived with Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. Prime Minister Modi addressed over 20,000 Indian diaspora members. In his address, the Prime Minister emphasized on India-Australia ties and how the friendship between the two countries has strengthened over the years. There was also a mega program showcasing India's rich cultural heritage. The Prime Minister will hold a bilateral meeting with Albanese tomorrow and the focus will be on trade, people-to-people -people exchanges, boosting regional cooperation and more. Bharat and Australia ke aityasik samanto ka vistar isse kahi jada bada sabse bada adhar hai mutual trust or mutual respect dunia ki सबसे बड़ी और सबसे युवा टैलेंट फैक्ट्री जिस देश में है वो है वो है सही जवाब दे रहे हैं आप वो है इंडिया जिन संभावनाओं को तलाश रही है उसमें ये स्वाभाविक भी है भारत हजारों वर्षों की जीवंत सभ्यता है भारत मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी है इट इज अज प्लेजर टू वेलकम प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन जस्ट माय फर्स्ट ईयर एज प्राइम मिनिस्टर व्हिच आई एम सेलिब्रेटिंग टुडे the prime minister my friend six times and what a joy it is to get to welcome prime minister modi here with all of you i said to my friend the prime minister before the last time i saw someone on the stage here was bruce springsteen and he didn't get the welcome that prime minister modi has got prime minister modi is the boss